Welcome back to Jeff Randall Live with me, Darshini David. Well, you could say that it's something of a summer blockbuster, although we're being a bit optimistic about the weather. For the owners of the View Cinema Group, that's as the private equity group Doughty Hanson today agreed to sell the company to two groups of Canadian investors. Forget this, £935 million. Pounds. That's quite some box office takings. And this means that in just three years, Britain's biggest chain of multiplexes has more than doubled its value. And Doughty Hanson bought View in 2010 for just £450 million. Pounds. Then it had 70 cinemas with 678 screens. Since then, it has expanded aggressively, doubling the number of cinemas to 146, with a total of more than 1,300 screens. Among its sites are two of the UK's three top-grossing multiplex cinemas, one at Westville Shepherd's Bush and one at Stratford. Joining me now is Tim Richards. He's a founder and chief executive of View Entertainment. Well, congratulations, doubling the value in just a couple of years. Where'd you go from here? <laughs> well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to believe, but, you know, we've had, we've had a really great period with Doughty Hansen, and mm -hmm. uh, we worked shoulder to shoulder, and we were able to get kind of a few deals done. And I think what you're seeing now is you're seeing the beginning of European consolidation. Right. Uh, there's a lot of very high quality assets that are it's a highly fragmented market yeah and and this is really the beginning there's a lot of opportunities out there so um, and and for us to be able to work now with two top Canadian funds um, uh, with AIMCO and with OMERS um, that's kind of for us going to be kind of the next big step forward for the next few years and uh, you talk about lots of attractive options out there um, what about the likes of Odeon and UCI have you got your eyes on them well, I mean, we've, we've been looking at strategic opportunities across Europe, mm -hmm. um, and what, what's really important for us is the quality of the circuit. I mean, we have the highest quality cinema chain uh, in, in, in Europe, and everything that we've done, everything we've bought has been qualitatively mm -hmm. very important, and it's been a very good fit for us. And, uh, and we're going to continue to kind of follow that, that goal. Uh, so we, we'll be looking at everything opportunistically. Well, it's been a huge achievement for you personally. Are you not mm -hmm. tempted now just to take the money and step back? <laughs> if I'd want to do that, I could have done that many years ago. Mm. No, I, I work because I love every day that I'm in the office. And, uh, and that's something that, that I think certain private equity groups understand that. They understand, you know, yes, money's a motivator, but mm -hmm. what really gets people working hard is when they're really passionate and love what they do. Yeah, as you say, money does matter to private equity at the end of the day. And uh, when you look at audience numbers and growth there, in itself, it's not that huge, is it? I mean, we're talking about, what, less than 1% a lot of the time. So how do you combat that when you're growing a business like View? Well, I think, I mean, what happened historically in our, in our sector is that, is that operators got complacent mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the business suffered because of that. And I think for us, what we continue to try and strive for is to try and find new and innovative ways of doing business. Mm -hmm. And it may be operationally, it may be new products, it may be new seats, you know, our introduction of our VIP seats across the circuit. It may be uh, some of our pioneering efforts many years ago in terms of bringing opera and live theater uh, to the big screen. Yeah. So there's, there's all of these different aspects and there's all of these different new business models that are on the short term and the medium term horizon. And, and that for us is what's really exciting. So I think you're going to see a period of the next three to five years of very significant growth. And a lot of that's on the back of digital projection technology. Right. Uh, we're all digital now, and, and that's a game changer. That's a huge game changer. So I think you know, on the organic side, we've got a mm -hmm. lot to do with the business. And on the acquisition, consolidation side, that's going to be keeping us busy for a while. Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, you're talking about Canadian investors here, and I believe you're Canadian as well, is that right? I am. So, so you're basically yeah. taking the business back home, but you're keeping yeah. the focus on Europe. No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, for personally, it's, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I mean, it's back to my roots. I mean, yeah. It's full circle, mm -hmm. um, back to my Canadian roots. But, uh, but no, I mean, our focus is really Europe. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a very big proponent, very big believer in staying close to your assets, and, uh, and we like being very close to what we're doing. Oh, it's tricky, though, isn't it? Because Europe as a whole is going through a pretty tough patch at the moment. Mm -hmm. How do you convince us all not just to turn up, but to buy those premium seats and also to shell out for popcorn as well and the rest of it? Well, I mean, we rely on movies. We rely on Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the benefits of having multiple markets, multiple territories, is you get a differential um, in viewing. And, and viewers like certain movies a lot more than others. Uh, a great example of that is uh, L'Entouchab, The Untouchables. Uh, mm -hmm. which is one of the highest grossing film in France and in Germany, and here it did nothing. So it really it smooths out the revenue curves for, for, for film, but, but generally. 
So basically, we keep our fingers crossed for lots more summer blockbusters at the moment. There's some great ones coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you want the trailers with you? We could have had a quick look at them before you get <laughs> Well, Tim, I know yes, it's sir. been a busy few days for you, so congratulations, yeah. and we appreciate you spending your time no here with us on Jeff Randall Live. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. That's almost all we've got time for this evening. But before I go, let's just take a look at my number of the day. And it's a fraction one. This one is 8.15. It's that's uh, how much shares in the fashion label Mulberry fell in percentage terms today after it confirmed that its creative director, Emma Hill, that's the woman behind the Alexa and Delray designs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then frankly, you're out of fashion, is leaving the company. Now, that's what I call a handbagging out, sorry. Well, you've been watching Jeff Randall Live. If you've missed any of this evening's interviews, they are all on the Sky News for iPad app. Tomorrow, the man himself, Jeff Randall, will be back here in the hot seat. Do stay with us. Martin is back with all the top stories here in Sky News after the break. <laughs>